this is the start to the game's third mission. If you manage to rescue Kurnow He's alive. during thank the last you, mission, Bobo, then Callista will acknowledge it here. She'll give you a small amount of money, and that's really her only reward for it. However, it will also lower the chaos level in the game that you're playing. You did it! Can I be of service to you? Speak to Piero to acquire any new upgrades. There's no real standard for which upgrades you should buy, but generally speaking, if you're playing a stealth game, then you should go crossbow, and if you're playing a non-stealth game, you should go pistol. For new powers, I decided to buy Ben Time. Ben Time is probably the most useful ability in the game next to Blink, but it's pretty expensive, especially for the second level. However, abuse of this power can pretty much win the entire game for you by itself. I also decided to buy the second level of Dark Vision. The second level of Dark Vision works exactly like the first, except that in addition to being able to see enemies through walls and their vision cones, you'll also be able to see the sound you generate, and be able to see any collectible items there are in the environment. Hello, Corvo. When you meet up with Havelock the next day, he'll have an odd mission for you. He wants you to go into the sewers and look for a Weeper. Weepers are plague-infected humans that populate the city. They're kind of a pain to deal with. They have pretty good vision range, and they can spot you pretty easy from far away. So this part's actually quite a bit difficult if you're playing a stealth playthrough. Real. The best way to take out these two without getting caught is to sneak up on them here and use sleep darts to take them out from far away. This will take out both of them stealthily without killing either of them. After taking them out, you'll be able to find a bone charm here, and a bone charm down the water. You went down there in the sewers? I thought I heard a weeper in there earlier. You're probably the bravest man I've ever met. Overseer Martin has arrived. He's with Admiral Havelock now. They want to talk to you. Corvo. I trust you. After you've spoken with Havelock for the second time, you'll get your assignment for this mission, which is taking out the other two Pendleton brothers. I know the Golden Cat. Corvo, I've asked to speak to you myself. You see, I'm sending you to kill my older brothers, Morgan and Custard. I'll take you to the Golden Cat when you're ready. This mission takes place in the Distillery District, the same level that we just completed, only using slightly different parts. We're taking a bit of an alternate route into here for stealth players. There is a very hard to avoid encounter here if you use an alternate means to get in, so we're kind of using this roundabout method to avoid that and tackle that with stealth. That encounter consists of three assassin enemies, the enemies at the start of the game who killed the Empress. 
Normally, if you walk through this alley, they'll spot you and warp down to you and attack you. However, by coming this way, we can avoid that ambush. This third and final guard can be a bit tricky to take out. Most of the time he's facing you, and he can turn around very fast when you try to blink, so it's best to just take him out from long range. There's also a weeper in this room, and he's guarding a bone charm. Take him out through the door to avoid being caught. Just like we dealt with Granny Rags in the last mission, in this mission we can deal with Slackjaw. Slackjaw is a character who, much like Granny Rags, will give you side missions. To talk to Slackjaw, head into the distillery and move all the way to the back to find him. The first thing Slackjaw will want you to do is to go to the Galvani resident to see if you can find a missing man of his. If you poison the still during the last mission, there will be several weepers in this area trapped in cages. The weepers can be difficult to deal with, but there's pretty good items inside the cages, so it pays to search around and find the keys that can unlock them. There are also quite a few items inside of the distillery, and you should make it a point to grab as many of them as you can. The incandescent paste blueprint that we just picked up can be given to Piero. Once you give it to him, you'll be able to buy sticky grenades.
that room also contained a key which will unlock this door. If you're playing stealth, it's important to know that being seen by a weeper will count as being seen and ruin your stealth rating. It's also important to note that killing a weeper will also count as a kill. So, if you're playing a stealth game with no kills, you cannot kill or be seen by any weepers during the game. Upon exiting the distillery, you'll find that the weepers in the cage near the entrance have escaped. However, opening this cage will let you grab the bone charm inside. You can exit out of the distillery the same way that you came in. Want to look at some of the things I've found? Good prices, I swear. There's nothing new to buy this time from the merchant here. If you bought the blueprints last time or unless you need ammo, there's nothing worth getting. We now have to travel back to the Galvani residence to complete the mission for Slackjaw. If you try going in the upper door, you'll find that it's locked. So instead, we're going to have to go through the middle door. You can also, of course, go through the bottom door, but that's more difficult. <laughs> 